Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the one minute chart of silver, and you can see that uh, the move through 19 is really dramatic here. Ran up to 1925. Um, you can also see on this chart that the the movement, the patterns, they're textbook. You can see the pennants. They form up with the uh, continuous trend line that meets all the touch points and then it meets up with the pennant near the pennant formation and breakout uh, continuation pattern with virtually no correction you can see the next pennant forms up a uh, little bit of correction back to the exact trend line blast off through that pennant and forms another pennant and uh, you can see again a correction to a sharper trend line now and uh, another breakout. So all the way up to 1925. Now pulling out to the daily chart, you can see the lines that I've drawn in here. Uh, actually, you probably want to put it on the weekly. Uh, the lines that I've drawn in here, you can see uh, around 18, that's going to be the bottom of this consolidation area. This is a very, very important area. This initially is the area where we topped in the Bear Stearns top and then the point where we fell to turned down and crashed. Uh, then you can see it became an important resistance point that took uh, nearly a year to get through then with the blast off went right out through it and then on the way down uh, once we got through that 26 now that 26 is even bigger than where we are right now 26 is a huge level it took the market a long time to get down through 26. That's going to be the next one we look at. But before we get there, we've got this congestion area here. And you can see we're already almost, I'll say we're about a third of the way into this area and on a very, very strong spike. Now, could this reverse and top? Absolutely. We'll pull up the MACD to see how overbought we are now with this particular move. So you can see in relation to past history, we're nowhere in compared to overbought territory. Probably traditional overbought territory is going to come in right about here, and we're a ways from there. We would need to get to probably 22 to get to that intermediate topping area. But you can see the big move that we had up to the $48, $50 area, it took... Uh, it took us all the way up to five and you can see we're at point seven so the equivalent move in that would it mean new highs probably and so we're moving very rapidly here uh, it could go to 22 overnight we just don't know or they could come in with a really big smackdown and that's also something that they've done in the past uh, so as we form up another pennant here. You can see the MACD is forming uh, another buy signal. The volume is fairly decent, but nothing significant. So we could see massive selling in the overnight. And that would probably be, if we get that, it, it may be one of the last good buying opportunities. You can see that with silver up, you know, approaching 20, um, when we were talking about the half ounce lunars, we were buying those. Some of those actually I got for nine something, and I got some for 10 something, 11 something. You can see now that with the price move that we have, we actually have lunars that we picked up that are basically paid spot for lunars. So it may be a last chance sort of thing before everything takes off. Now I wanted to cover the SRS Rocco article here talking about this is something that I've talked about for a very very long time about how tiny the number of dollars are that are in these markets and uh, and and I believe these numbers actually include the paper markets but let's read this making the case for $12,000 gold and $360 silver Global financial assets are more inflated and propped up than ever, according to the most recent figures published by the City UK Fund Report. 
total global conventional assets under management topped $105 trillion in 2014. That's one hell of a lot of future paper claims. Unfortunately for most investors, the majority of these supposed assets will evaporate into thin air from where they came. Bubbles were designed for children to make and play with, not meant for adults to use in the financial industry. Regardless, the global financial system is now polluted with a massive amount of toxic bubbles covering all corners of the planet. When the, f- when the first large one finally pops, watch out. Gold and silver as a percentage of global financial assets are less than peanuts. I put together this chart from figures I found at sharelinks.com. According to the data, gold comprises 0.58 percentage of global financial assets, while silver comes in at a pathetic 0.013%. Even though gold is a little more than half a percent of total global financial assets, it's at least 45 times greater than silver, which is why central banks hate silver much more than gold. Why? Because very few central banks own silver, and the market is so tiny that if a significant amount of funds decided to flow into silver, it would cause its price to skyrocket higher. These next two charts show how gold and silver as a percentage of global financial assets have declined since 1980. In 1980, gold represented a stunning 5% of the total global financial assets, while silver comprised 0.25%. However, over the next three and a half decades, these percentages declined significantly. Gold is now nine times less of a percentage of global financial assets than it was in 1980, while silver is 20 times less. The Fed, central banks, and Wall Street did a wonderful job administering a frontal lobotomy on the public, which forced them out of real assets and into the largest financial Ponzi scheme in history. This is important. I like this term, frontal lobotomy on the public. Uh, This is what we're going to address here uh, about how they're controlling the minds of the public and how ultimately I believe they're going to fail. Making the case for $12,000 gold and $360 silver. If investors decide to increase their gold and silver investments, To equal the percentage in 1980, we would have the following. Gold times 1,300 times 9 is 12,000. Silver, 18 times 20 is $360. Before some of the readers start rolling their eyes and belly aching that this is just another attempt at precious metals hype, let me add a few logical points of view. Many precious metals analysts, including Jim Rickards and Jim Seclair, believe we are going to see a gold price north of $10,000. They base their forecast on backing all the outstanding U.S. dollars by a certain percentage of gold. The higher the percentage of gold backing, the higher the gold price. However, $10,000 gold seems to be a base price when faith in the U.S. dollar goes down the toilet. So the $12,000 gold price figure showed above is not all that crazy. Furthermore, a $360 silver price when gold is $12,000 is a 33 to 1 gold-silver ratio. We already experienced a gold-silver ratio of 31 to 1 in April 2011. Gold was trading at $1,500 when silver was trading at $48, which means a 33 to 1 gold-silver ratio at $12,000 gold and $360 silver is really not that insane after all. That being said, I actually believe the future value of values of gold and silver could be even more silly and stupid than 12000 and 360 Why? Because the popping of adult-sized massive financial bubbles could actually push gold and silver investment percentages even higher than they were in 1980. What happens when the global investors try to invest 10% in gold or just say 1-2% to in silver? This may seem outlandish right now, but when financial institutions start going bankrupt and bankers start jumping off rooftops, common sense investing will likely return as proper investing logic like a 2 by 4 across the head. When the world finally experiences a global Lehman Brothers event that pushes us into massive depression, investors will seek safety in precious metals. Unfortunately, there will be very little supply and only much higher prices. So excellent article you can see how tiny the percentage is it's unbelievable that silver is only 0.013 percent now a question came up on the member site 
And it's a very good question. Do you think that silver is going to follow gold up? And I wanted to say a couple things about that. First of all, uh, I, I mentioned in my reply to that that we have FOFOA. And I've covered him many times. He is a person who argues that because there is so much gold out there and so many dollars out there, that naturally gold is going to be the go-to asset. It is the go-to asset for central banks. And for that reason, gold is going to outperform silver when the crisis occurs. Now, I don't believe that. Now, let me try to show you the reasons I don't believe that. And the first one is going to be the the idea that uh, was introduced by Anatole Fichetti, Antal Fichetti, and this is from the New Austrian School of Economics. I'll read you a little bit here. The New Austrian School of Economics is a series of lectures established by Professor Antali Fichetti and examines a branch of economic science, the field of monetary economics. It is mainly based on the work of Car Carl Menger, 1840-1921, and also the theories of Ludwig von Mises and Frederick August von Hayek. The school is pro proposed for everybody interested in the Austrian theory of money, credit, and banking. Why the new Austrian School of Economics? Carl Menger identified money as the most marketable commodity as freely chosen by voluntarily trading people. So this is going to be the big issue here. People choose money. Ludwig von Mises identified that money is always created by free enterprising individuals. People create money. So this is a very important point. Now, I pointed out in the other article that people have been given a frontal lobotomy regarding silver. And in theory, if you think about it, if it's true that people choose money, and it's also true that people can be mind-controlled, then very clearly it is possible for silver to be demonetized. It just takes a certain amount of convincing by whatever means uh, to get people to no longer believe that silver is money. Now, that's kind of where we are. I don't believe it will hold, but it is kind of where we are. And that's why I've always emphasized that silver is the people's money. Uh, it's definitely not the banker's money because the bankers can't afford... Uh, they, they can afford to buy it, but they can't afford the risk that that causes when they do buy it because the explosion in price would be so tremendous it would endanger their entire system. So... Silver is and always has been the people's money, but it's even more so now. If enough people, and it, it's a very small percentage, you could still have an enormous percentage of people walking around with frontal lobotomies and being completely mind-controlled and not understanding that silver is money. And just a small percentage could wake up and understand that silver is money. And we know from just the, the SRS Rocco charts that it's not going to take very many people. Uh, even a move from 0.013% to 0.13%, in other words, a tenfold move, would that be a tenfold move in the price of silver? Probably, probably more. Just that uh, could make um, silver go to that $360 price that he's giving here. So it doesn't take much. It doesn't take many people waking up. Now, now that I've given you this notion that people choose money and therefore investing in silver and expecting it to go up with gold uh, becomes vulnerable uh, because if people can be convinced that it's no longer money, that it's just an industrial commodity, that it doesn't function in the same way that gold does, it doesn't protect you from a coming hyperinflation, it doesn't protect you from a coming deflation, it doesn't serve the same functions that gold does in protecting you, then yes, it's true that, uh, that this effect can be nullified. Now, I'm going to turn around and disagree with this. 
I actually don't agree with this concept that people choose money, and I'm going to show you why. This is actually a verse from the Bible, and this is according to the law of first occurrence. So I've covered the law of first occurrence before, and uh, basically the law of first occurrence in the Bible means that whenever any word occurs for the first time in the Bible, you want to very, very carefully look at the context and how it's being used because that's going to be often definitive for that word and it's going to help you understand the rest of the usage throughout the Bible. And I wanted to point out this verse. This is the law of first occurrence for silver. And uh, this is in Genesis 13.2. And this is the verse. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. So the first thing you notice here is that they're listed in order of the herds, that's wealth first. And then you'll notice that second is silver and gold is third. Now that's very interesting because uh, we know that cattle, that's the key to living in that day. It also was connected to commerce in many ways because uh, the herds of cattle and, and the other herds, which this is a general term, uh, all of those were connected to the ability to trade, to have the things necessary for life. And then, of course, silver was the, uh, was the money of merchants. We, we know that when Abram and uh, his descendants had to buy uh, things, they bought them. Uh, the, for example, the cave at Machpelah, I believe, where Abraham buried his wife, was purchased with silver. So it was the money of merchants. And then gold, of course, we know gold is the money of kings. So it's very interesting here that it's listed in this order, cattle, silver, and gold. And here is what it is, very rich. These are the things that make you very rich. So silver is definitely something that makes you very rich. Now, this is not given in terms of where you would say that it was someone's opinion. So, for example, it, this, this verse does not say, and Abram was considered to be very rich, or uh, people heard that Abram was very rich. No, it's stated as a matter of fact that Abram was very rich. And these are the things that made him very rich, cattle, silver, and gold. So what I'm proposing here is that Yes, people can be mind controlled, they can be lobotomized, they can have their views of the world altered by the propaganda that is out there every day, but ultimately I think that reality is going to come to the fore, and the reality is that silver and gold, they are money, they are actually objectively as a matter of fact, and by their very nature, created as, and by the creator, as money. So it's really not a matter of people's opinion. If people don't believe that silver is money, the fact of the matter is that they're simply wrong, that silver is money. And regardless of what they believe, it doesn't change the fact that it is money. Now, if they don't believe that it's money, it's definitely going to affect its price in relation to other things. So that's when we see this type of absolutely ridiculous percentage. We know from past investment advice, just from the Wall Street regulars, the past investment advice has been that your portfolio should contain 10% precious metals and that would be equal parts gold and silver, and that means that silver should be 5%. Now, I showed you that a 0.1% price, or a 0.1% portion on silver would yield that $300 price. A 1% would yield a $3,000 price, and a 5% would yield a $15,000 an ounce price for silver. So that's something to really think about as silver is rallying here. Um, it's still so ridiculously cheap 
you can see that we've reset here now on the MACD and uh, it seems to be forming up another pennant. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if by the end of the week we we're actually up and testing that $26 price. Um, you can see, let's just clear off everything here and just look at the chart with new eyes. It, you can see that it, it wants to get into this area here that's beyond this this long period of time when it was falling. So there's a lot of falling uh, lines here. You can draw any number of them in, but you can see that w when we're talking about an area around 22 or around 23 here or around 24, we're talking smooth sailing after that and a huge air pocket area that is this entire area here and silver can move that fast. It could move to 26 by the end of the week. And we'll talk to you next time.